All right, everybody, we back. Um, just a quick overview. We're just going to test out this uh, char, char grill at uh, 980. We're going to do this uh, beef chuck roast. Uh, ain't no way I'm going to test it out on no, uh, no brisket. But anyway, all I'm going to do is something simple. I'm going to just take this tonight, let it sit for about six hours inside of here. And I'm going to use this. Let me see. Beef broth, fat free, and low on sodium. You don't, you, you definitely want beef broth with low sodium for the simple fact that uh, I'm gonna put salt on there in the morning and I don't want it to be oversaturated. So y'all don't have to sit here for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up real quick. Put it in here, pour this on it, and I'm gonna give you a little video real quick, snapshot of it before I uh, let it marinate all night, y'all. Be right back. All right, we're back, y'all. I just wanted to comment real quick. I know y'all see this. I'm no way affiliated with Food Lion. It's just, that's where I found the cheapest piece of meat at. So, hey, testing out the grill. Why well, burn up a perfectly good piece of meat? So, we're going to test it out. But, no, what I want to do is, I want y'all to see this. Look how red and marbleized this piece of meat is. This is crazy. Um... I don't usually get nothing like this or see anything like this at Food Line, but for $11, I can't complain. But anyway, um, all I'm doing is just pouring this, and I wanted to cover the entire thing. Um, those who are uh, cheap and want to say beef broth, it's on like $2. Actually, a little less than that. All I'm, you can inject it as well, but I'm going to pour the whole thing in there. I don't usually use or keep beef broth. So... I'm gonna put the top on this. I'm gonna submerge it a little bit in there. Yeah, and I'll probably flip it over in the morning. And let it sit and put the top on. And we're in business, y'all. Be back in the morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your boy, Mr. B. We're back. Uh, let's talk about this real quick. Ingredients. Black pepper, garlic powder, and of course salt. Um, how much do I use? Just got a cup, just so I'm gonna pour it in there. I am doing one half this salt, one half garlic pepper, one third black pepper. I mean garlic powder, I'm sorry, and one third black pepper. That's just my combination I use for my briskets. Um, and we're gonna go with that. Keep in mind, like I said, we're getting back to the swing of things. We're gonna see what it looks like. So, this is what beef looks like brined in uh, beef, beef broth. That's so what I'm gonna do. I'll be right back. I'm gonna pour this out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna pour it out. I'm not gonna keep it. I'm gonna pour it out, and then I'm gonna pat it dry, and then we're gonna uh, do the mixture. I'll show you that. And then we're going to fire up the grill and get going, y'all. I ain't going to keep y'all. We'll be back. All right, y'all. We're back. Got my beef sitting now. About to pour my concoction up real quick. Like I said, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I'm just this simple. Eyeballing it. Teaspoon, tablespoon, whatever. Uh, however, however you want to do it. Um, but just make sure your measurements are um, about the same. And this is the reason why I didn't use the brine, or not the brine, well, what I call a brine, but the beef stock salt with sodium in it, because that's what salt's made of. Um, I didn't want to overpower the beef, because at the end of the day, you want to taste the beef. So, when I say two-thirds, that's about all the pepper I'm going to need in relation to that. So, the beauty of a cup. We're going to make this simple. We're going to thoroughly season this. Uh, keep in mind, what you have, you don't have to use. I usually have like a stainless steel uh, container that I just fill it up with. And then I use it as necessary. But I guess it sits better when salt stays in 
individual containers and then you mix it together versus mixing it all together and keeping it. It kind of holds better. Uh, but I know a lot of you saying, hey, why are you not using um, olive oil or anything like that? Because um, I don't want to. Nah, let me stop. Uh, I don't think I need it with, with beef. Like I said, the end goal is for it to, uh, to uh, not be overly salty, not be overly peppery, or garlicky for that matter. So I'm really just going to sit it right here for the next hour while I light up the grill and let it just uh, soak in. Salt's going to take some of the... That's another reason why you brine. Salt's going to take some of the, uh, the water out of here. And you'll see that right before we get ready. But I'm not going to bore you with this. Um, we're going to finish this up and then let it sit for like an hour. And then put it on the grill, y'all. We'll be back. What's good, man? This your boy, Mr. B. We are back. I got the grill all cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. Um, it's time to put it in action. One comment, though, before I light this and then get on our day is, is I want to bring your attention. I had mentioned this in a previous video. Using one of these pans to uh, catch all my dripping. And I run it. It fits perfect lengthwise. Cheap dollar store. Um, but it doesn't sit flush when you put a grill grate on it. And what I mean by that is, as soon as I put this on it, my grill, grill grates are elevated. The problem with that is, now my meat is elevated, and I guess it's not a problem if I'm cooking like this, but they hard to clean, y'all. It's hard to clean. I thought it would be easy since I would just have water in there um, to catch my drippings. But here's what I'm about to do. I'm about to scrap that method all together and use this. But anyway, here's what I'm about to do. I'm gonna post these down below. This light right here is, is like perfect me, for me grilling. Look at this. If I sit this on top of the grill, whatever meat I got up there, it's gonna work perfect. So I'm gonna try that today. It's gonna catch my dripping. Booyah! And, all this is about less cleanup, y'all. And, ironically, this is what's gonna happen. So these, look out, look out thing right here. Right, I can slide it up under the grill grate and it sits perfect, it's not bent. I don't care about the shininess of it. I can reuse it for as long as I got the grill, it's stainless steel. I can wash it out, continue to pour water in it. I love it. It's gonna make cleanup a whole lot easier than me using aluminum foil every time I barbecue. So stay tuned. I'm not gonna put it up under here today for this, just because I got a, uh, uh, a uh, uh, big block of beef, big block of beef, roast pork, roast beef. Anyway, so yeah, all I'm gonna do is sit it on top of here and sit it on there and let it do its thing. Um, I forgot, I pulled all my beef stock out, but probably don't want no cross contaminant with that anyway. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy uh, apple juice concoction. I ain't telling you what's in it, but apple juice is the base. Dollar store apple juice. Um, but we're gonna get to it. I'm gonna sit it in the middle. I've already tested my um, gauges. They are spot on um, with temperatures. Differences maybe 30 and 10 degrees. 10 degrees off, 30 degrees off. Um, when it comes to the temperature that's displayed on the, uh, on the monitor. But that's okay, because I'm sticking a probe in the meat and then we're gonna go from there, y'all. So stay tuned. All right, ladies and gents, we back. I got my uh, this piece of beef right here. Actually, I need to give myself a little more room. Slide it over. That's my temp gauge. All I'm gonna do is sit it right on top of this and just let it go. Uh, this feels this way. Yeah. Just let it run. I'm gonna move this out the way. I'm gonna show y'all something here in a minute. I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna close my vent a little bit so I can get in the bottom. I allow all my heat out. It's slow smoking. Give me one second, I'm gonna show you something. So, here we go. I'm opening this up. I know, I, I think I talked about it on a previous video. And, uh, 
finally came in the mail. It didn't make it all in time for my last cook, the Boston butt. But uh, as y'all can see, this is aggravating to me. Uh, this particular connection here, where I gotta plug it in. Um, but we're gonna see. I'm about to test something out here. Um, got the uh, connection from iGreenly, which converts uh, five volts to 12 volts, which is what you need to plug plug this in. And uh, you bear with me. I get this. We'll get this thing set up and uh, test it out on my um, my box, my USB box, portable charger is what I call it. So hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, I am back, y'all. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. This is, let's see here. Let me see if I can get close. I don't know if you can see that. I got three lights on here. It's actually about two and a half. Um, it's called a power ad. Uh, I'll look and see. I bought this like a couple of years ago, like I said. Um, output, 12 volt. And if you, let me see if you see. Let me look in the camera. Uh, you can't really see it because the camper it's at 235 right now and it's kind of flickering so i'm gonna do this i'm gonna unplug this from my power supply plug it directly in there now, and it's back on I'm getting power from my power supply. that's what i'm talking about i'm gonna set this to 250 and yeah, let's make it 265 and I'm going to pump it up so the temperature comes up. And we're going to start our cook, y'all. So this thing is actually pretty, pretty, pretty decent. Like I said, no more, no more plugging in. Uh, next time I'll actually charge it up. You know, me being lazy, I didn't charge it last night. And luckily it's got a charge. Hopefully it lasts about... Anywhere from six to twelve hours a day. I don't know how long this beef gonna take to uh, to cook, but we're gonna see. Uh, so bear with us, like I said, and we're gonna roll through this, y'all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Um, temperatures are kind of set in. Keep in mind, I don't know if you can see the digital um, temp gauge. It says two sixty five. It's been hovering spot on. I love this thing. The only thing I'm skeptical about is. What happens? My fan burns out. I've been hearing stuff like that. So I'm looking for some ways to modify that. Maybe uh, or maybe they come out with a modification for it. Um, I do have some little smoke leakage coming out of here, my firebox. And that's with me even using this uh, gasket right here from, who I where it's from? Somebody online. Uh, I don't particularly like it because it's too thin. I should have got the thicker one. But I'm going to do an extra layer, and once I'm done, I'll show it to you uh, when I open it. But it's a whole lot better, and that's not really for heat getting out. It's really for my temperatures are a whole lot better. They are almost dialed in 250. Uh, remember I told you that one was like 40 and 10 off or something like that? They're almost the same right now, now that I put the gasket on. I forgot to mention that earlier. I put that on before I did the cook, and it looks like that has tremendously got both the both sides the same temp. Um, let me give you a look because so you can see what I'm saying. And these are El Cheapos that I had to put in boiling water to verify this. 250, that's 250 as well on both sides. The uh, internal, let me make sure my camera's good. The internal cook temp um, on my meat probe is at 145 now. I'm just let this thing run. I got my um, apple juice and two other things in there. Comment below if you think you know what's in there besides the apple juice. Um, and, and this is just to keep the beef from drying out, so. There we go. Yeah. Let me let you look at that. Beast mode. You know I got home, so I had to put some sausage on there. And you see I separated them because I want to see how it was cooking. Um, looks like it's doing pretty good. Y'all already know what model if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Anyway, this your boy, man. We'll be back in 
I'm gonna do another two hours, man, just cause I'm less. Remember, this was like Chuck Rose. Just gonna let it run. It's at 145. Come back in another two hours, and then uh, I'm gonna set it, and then it'll let me know on the uh, my phone app and my iPod, iPad, bro. And then uh, we'll just keep going from there. I love this thing, man. Still running off the uh, the battery pack, which is which is tight. No electricity. Anyway, we'll be back, y'all. All right, back y'all, barbecue man. Let me tell you what happened to me. Remember, I was telling you earlier that I didn't charge this up. Well, it died on me, so I had to go back to my handy dandy uh, plug. Um, it's a good secondary alternative, and um, yeah, lesson learned to stop being lazy and go ahead and charge it up. So I'm gonna plug it up, charge it up, make sure it's good for the future uh, uh cook. And uh, it's at the four month, four hour mark. It's still sitting at about two twenty five. It's perfect. I'm gonna let it run for another probably two hours. Well, it's at one fifty right now. My um meat probe, and then uh, wow, mosquito. Um, yeah. So at about one sixty, that's when I'm gonna go ahead and um keep my eye on it. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it in uh, aluminum foil. I got my pan over here. I'm gonna wrap it in aluminum foil, and then uh. You already know. Go for about 205 to make it good and tender. And I'll uh, put a little beef broth in there um, and let it go for what it's known. But anyway, let me get you uh, a look real quick and then we're going to send you on your way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at That's the four hour mark right there, y'all. Mm-hmm. Look at that pan holding my my juices in. Yeah. Easy to clean, baby. Back I don't normally do that, but it is what it is. Yo, we'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back. And it is time to open this bad baby up and do what we do. I got this. I'm going to put my beef broth in there. Just a little bit, and I'll show you here in a minute. Just enough. Just enough to cover the bottom. I'm gonna open this. Shouldn't take long at all. Ooh, that look good. Get my aluminum foil. And then we're going to wrap this thing up and then uh, come back in a little bit. Hey, comment below if you got any questions on what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, how you've seen it done before, uh, recommendations um, that you have, um, especially if you got a chart driller. Um, I'd like it. Temperature stays the same, basically. Um, just doing exactly what I, I want to smoke it to do. It's almost like cheating. Um, but I'm a double wrap with it. Just that dollar store aluminum foil, so you gotta use more than two layers. Pumped it up to 375, I think. Let me see here. 325. I'm gonna pump it up to 375. Yeah, let's do 
350. For about an hour, we're gonna see how it looks. I'm not even gonna open it. I'm just gonna punch through until uh, probably get dark, uh, dark, or until I run out of charcoal. Whichever one uh, um, deems the most uh, uh, works the best for me. But we're gonna see, man. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, man, this is without further ado. This thing ain't been covering all day long. As you can see, it's dark out here. And I don't even have street lights, really. They down there. But it's coming as they continue to build. But anyway, uh, it's about time to take this off now. Uh, I'm going to put it in the cooler. I want y'all to see it. Don't let me get my blood real quick. What I call my El Cheapos. Dollar store. Got to store somewhere. Got a store somewhere. All right. Oh, what's that? Okay. All right, here we go, y'all. The thing, what I like about this, I smell it. I don't see too much steam, like where it's just about to burn me. Oh, there it go. Uh, I like this thing. Let's see here. Ooh, that's hot. You see that steam coming off of it? Let me see if I can give you a quick look. All right. Let me give you a quick look. This thing should fall apart, y'all. We're gonna, uh, I'm just gonna take it, wrap it in a towel, stick it in my cooler out here. And we're gonna come back in about two hours. Nah, maybe four hours. Uh, let it cool down just like I do a brisket. And then um, we're gonna see what it looked like. Yeah, we'll be back in uh, uh, maybe about four hours. Sorry, late at night. I had to get up early, early in the morning to, uh, to do it for y'all so y'all can see it. But anyway, stay tuned, y'all. We'll be back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And I am finally about to show you what it looks like. Uh, of course, I already peeked into it because that's what we do. And I already ate some, too. But I'm going to show you something. Look at this. You talking about smoke ring? Man, get out of here. Mm. I'm going to just show you how. how look at that. Mm. Hold on, let's do this. I already ate half of it. Look at that. I'm just going to break a piece off. Man, don't tell me about barbecue unless you can do this type stuff. Anyway, we're going to talk in a minute. I got it. Ooh, this hot. Yeah. I gotta cook some carrots and stuff like that. I should have put it in there with it. But that's for another video. I was just testing out this grill. Um, bear with me. Uh, we're gonna eat, and then I'll be right back with y'all. We can talk about it, all right? <laughs> 